All I do is post things for my people and my community and those that it's actually going to impact. Anybody else that has criticism it obviously wasn't meant for them. In his first press conference since posting an anti-Semitic film, the Brooklyn Nets' Kyrie Irving showed his own contradictions. I am no different than the next human being, so don't treat me any different. You guys come in here and make up this powerful influence I have. So let's point them out. He says he is no different than any other person with no powerful influence. I'm in a unique position to have a level of influence on my community. To then saying he does have influence. I'm not alone. I have a whole army around me. With a whole army. I hate to break it to you, but that is not an average person. What he says and does matters. He just told you so. Out of all the judgment that people got from me posting, I, I just without talking to me. Irving then demands a conversation about his posts. Alas, he is asked. On the topic of promotion, why did you decide to promote something that Alex Jones said? That was a few weeks ago. I do not stand with Alex Jones. And says this, however. My, my post was a post from Alex Jones that he did in the early 90s or late 90s about secret societies in America of occults. And it's true. So Kyrie confirms he is a conspiracy theorist claiming Jones is a truth teller. This is a yikes and a half, which we'll revisit. Then he's asked about the film he posted. To follow up on the promotion of the movie and the book. Can you please stop calling it a promotion? What am I promoting? Put it out on your platform. But I'm promoting it? Let's pause here for a moment. Because this is a point of contention and unfortunately something many Kyrie stands have latched onto. It is, well, what is the word promotion? Via Bleacher Report's Dan Favell, Kyrie tweeted a link with no caption that led to a page in which the movie could be rented or purchased. But yeah, it wasn't a promotion or endorsement. Recall Kyrie saying, no one talked to me about his posts. So here is his chance being asked about it from from well-respected media man nick Ferdell. do you see me doing do you see me in front putting of it the, out there the people title? are gonna say that you are yeah, put promoting. it out there just like you put things out there right hang on a minute here here's the very sad part about all this we must now differentiate between a member of the media like nick Ferdell sitting press row or in the press box watching a game taking notes going to the locker room getting quotes from players aggregating a story and then meeting deadline to when the star of the Brooklyn Nets talks about this they dropped a one and five and that star who is on a struggling team posting a link to a film that is anti-semitic that's where we're at you put things out there for a living, right? Right, but my Great. stuff is Great. not so let's move on. filled let's with anti-Semitic Let's stuff. move on. Don't dehumanize me up here. I, I'm not I'm not doing I'm that. Another You're human free being. to post I can what, post whatever I want, so say what, that and shut it down and move on to the next question. But Kyrie, you have to understand that by I don't have post, to understand anything from you. But, but it's not me. Nothing. By it's no people that you're making up, bro. Move on. But by posting move what on. you Next did, question. Next question. Do you guys have any more questions for me? And they're going to say... you guys have any more questions? So the guy that said no one asked and no one talked to me about it he just was asked about it and they tried communicating and he ran from it he was given the open forum and this is what he chose he demanded another reporter ask a question which by the way if you are pursuing a career in this field do not talk over that one reporter or media member and throw a lifeline here because what you're doing is not allowing the events that are taking place um, and what is supposed to transpire. You are giving them an out, so don't do it. Um, saying this is something Nick Friedel will marvel at? No. Let, let's go over what we've seen in the last week, okay? Outside of a UF football game, anti-Semitism, the 405 freeway in Los Angeles, anti-Semitism, an overpass in Jacksonville, Florida, anti-Semitism, Chicago rapper guy, anti-Semitism. You think we want to talk about this? 
The film he posted espouses ideas in line with more extreme factions of the black Hebrew Israelites, which have a long history of misogyny, homophobia, xenophobia, Islamophobia, and especially anti-Semitism. The movement generally coalesces around the notion that black people are the real descendants of the ancient Israelites, with more extreme factions claiming that black people have been robbed of their identity as being God's chosen people via the Southern Poverty Law Center. It's those extremist sects that have often parroted classic anti-Semitic tropes like claiming European Jews, often referred to as the synagogue of Satan, wield outsized control over society, especially in industries like banking and the media. They've also pushed anti-Semitic claims that Jews are responsible for slavery and the effeminizing of black men. You know who loved this? You hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years? That sounds like a choice. <laughs> a man who is a proud anti-Semite, Chicago rapper guy. After posting his love for Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker, whose host for a potential fundraiser put out this insignia, a swastika with needles, the Walker campaign later called it off, Chicago rapper guy posted a pic of Kyrie Irving, which reads, there's some real ones still here. In the film, Irving promoted the director, Ronald Dalton Jr., pivots to the mass media, calling it the biggest tool of indoctrination, brainwashing, and propaganda that the world has seen, and adding that it's been helping Satan deceive the world for centuries. To back up his claim, Dalton utilizes a fabricated quote that's been a staple of anti-Semitic literature for decades, the quote which details the supposed control Jews have over every facet of society, is attributed to Harold Rosenthal, an aide to former New York center, Jacob Javits, who was killed in a terrorist attack in Istanbul in 1976. The quote first appeared two years later, published in a pamphlet called The Hidden Tyranny by a man named Walter White Jr., who appeared to make up an entire interview with Rosenthal to push this anti-Semitic theory. A source for Ronald Dalton's findings? Per NJ.com, the film also cites a quote attributed to H. Guy, let's say which says Jews will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the N-words know who they are. This is the power of the self-proclaimed free thinker, right? The book contains even more instances of anti-Semitism. The book's fourth chapter, When Did Racism Towards Black People Start? starts by falsely suggesting that anti-black racism can be traced back to key Jewish texts. Another section wonders if there is any connection between Lucifer, Satan, Freemasonry, and Judaism, and includes the claim, interesting enough, in earlier years, many Jews and European Scottish slash York Freemasons have claimed that they worship Satan or Lucifer. Many famous high-ranking Jews and Freemasons have written books admitting to this. The book also quotes the infamous anti-Semitic hoax, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It includes a laundry list of industries from banking to book publishing that European Jews allegedly dominate before stating, using control of our money and the mass media, the European Jews gain control of our thinking. Elsewhere, the book refers to the Jewish controlled news media. In the Alex Jones clip he shared, the New World Order conspiracy, which gained popularity in the early 90s, posits that a cabal of elites secretly works in tandem to orchestrate global affairs to enslave populations worldwide. According to a published study by the Middlebury Institute, the rhetoric promulgated by backers of this conspiracy may appear innocuous at first, but it presents a real-world danger as it promotes a fatalistic worldview for adherents, possibly inciting them to commit violence against communities, infrastructure, and individuals deemed complicit in the NWO's implementation. This cabal narrative is commonly associated with other anti-Semitic conspiracy theories that claim Jewish culpability, alleging that they are behind the orchestration of the NWO, leading to an increased danger toward Jewish communities. In 2017, the ADL wrote that NWO conspiracists commonly believe that hundreds of concentration camps have been built in the U.S. ready to house dissenters, that the government will declare martial law, possibly on a pretext such as responding to a terrorist attack, and that the government will engage in mass gun confiscations. This is the same Alex Jones who claimed in November of 2016 that Hillary Clinton had personally unalive and you see the words there. Jones also previously asserted that the Jewish mafia controls Uber and the U.S. healthcare system. Mark Potok, a senior fellow at the SPLC, characterized Jones as the primary producer of conspiracy theories in America today. Irving's faux intellectual act is as tired as it is dangerous. 
Here he was offered a chance to explain some of his theories in detail, to quote some of his sources, to let people decide for themselves. Instead, he turned the tables and played victim. Unfortunately, there are people who will watch the documentary after Irving's promotion and believe some of the poison it espouses. Blind hero worship of athletes and celebrities is dangerous. Here's the thing, Irving has been on this path for quite some time. He said the earth was flat, which he would take his time apologizing for. It's right in front of our faces. They lie to us, he said years back. He also noted, I'm a big conspiracy theorist. You can't tell me anything. Not all, but some flat earthers espouse anti-Semitic views. Then there's Kyrie's refusal to get vaccinated. The ADL wrote, anti-Semitism has been an ongoing theme since the pandemic began, with conspiracies alleging that Jews are behind COVID and are using it as a tool to expand global influence and derive profit. As countries begin administering the vaccine, Jews are once again the target of anti-Semitic conspiracies, mostly aimed at dissuading people from being vaccinated. He watched fans of his, if you'll remember, try to storm and force their way into Barclays Center to make a statement for him. He was silent. People could have been seriously injured. There was some guy who brought two baseball bats. They were trying to force their way in. It became violent and Kyrie said nothing. Not a peep. I actually think he marveled at that is what I think. Didn't come out against it. Didn't say anything condemning it. Nothing. Silent. Kind of shows you something. He then called himself a martyr, even though the mandate that Eric Adams lifted was basically for wealthy athletes. Longtime sports journalist Myron Metcalf wrote, Kyrie is like most faux intellectuals. They don't read, so their whole mantra is rooted in YouTube clips. They don't explain the things they say because their attitude is based on the idea that they speak and others listen. They don't want dialogue because they're not good at it. I don't expect, I don't expect understanding from a media conglomerate group that sincerely talks about the game of basketball and then we bring up religion as if it's correlative at times when it's convenient for people to bring it up. This is what is here. It's on a public platform. Did I do anything illegal? Did I do anything illegal? Did I hurt anybody? Did I harm anybody? Am I going out and saying that I hate one specific group of people?